Wouldn't it be great if users of Ableton Live could create their own unique features, things that we couldn't even think of or would never get around to implementing? That's what we talked about to our friends at Cycling74. These are the people who make Max, the visual programming environment. So we decided to work together and now, after two years of joint development, Max and Live are perfectly integrated. Let's take a look at Max for Live. Max comes into life as instruments and effects. I have a couple of Max effects here in the device browser and I can drag one in, just like an Ableton device. This is the simplest imaginable audio effect, a gain stage. It has one control that adjusts an amplitude attenuation factor. Now let's make this a little more useful. We turn the gain stage into a classic ring modulator. To do this, we need to change the inside of the device. To enter the device, I click this button and Max appears, showing the circuitry. Let's see. The signal comes in through this object and it leaves the device through that one. Between them, there are two multiplier objects, one for the left and one for the right signal, which multiply the audio with the output of this gain control. Now, a ring modulator multiplies one audio signal by another, so let's replace the volume control with an oscillator. We won't be needing this gain control here, so let's delete it. Now we insert a cycle object. This is a simple sine wave oscillator that comes with Max. And we add a control that we will use to adjust the oscillator's frequency. Now let's make the necessary connections. We connect the cycle to the multipliers. connect the control to the cycle and now we are ready to play our ring modulator. Notice that this all happens while the music kept playing in live. When we go back to live we see that the device has changed. The frequency control is there and it still works. This device works just like any other live device. We can store and recall presets, and we can automate and map the controls. Now let's look at a more advanced example. Here's a step sequencer. This step sequencer is a MIDI effect that was made with Max for Live. It has features like an adjustable step size, Shift left and right buttons to shift the sequence. Up to four sequences, I'll activate the last one here. And we can adjust the view of the self-made interface just like in live. Because it's a MIDI effect, we can use the MIDI notes from a clip to control what it does. When we take a look under the hood, we can see that it really is a Max patch. This step sequence is included in Max for Live, along with a number of other instruments and effects which you can use out of the box or change and extend any way you want. Max for Live comes with a set of step-by-step -step tutorials that teach you how to make useful devices like this BeatSync Delay. Not only can we make new instruments and effects with Max, we can also create features that change the musical material in a live set. For example, here I have a function that reverts whatever MIDI notes are selected in Live's MIDI editor. We can also make new features that extend what hardware does. For example, the new APC40 by Akai. Normally, those buttons are used to fire clips in the session view. Now, I'm running them as a step sequencer interface. We have made a completely new setup using Max for Live. We are so excited to see what people will build with this. 
By the way, you don't have to be a Max programmer to use something that somebody else built. Max for Life comes with a great selection of devices ready to use out of the box. And Live 8's new web collaboration service gives you access to everything that the Max for Life community makes. Check out the movie called Share for more. My name is Gerhard Beles from Ableton. Thank you for watching.